this evening is Reverend Sean Whittington. And Reverend Sean Whittington is a devout Catholic and an ordained exorcism deliverance minister. His wife, Sharon, is a certified Stephen minister through her Lutheran, Lutheran faith, a near-death experience survivor, and a sensitive intuitive. They both are survivors of extreme demonic attacks. They are husband-wife, ghost-busting team with, with 40 years combined experience. The team is fully equipped to perform the rough, thorough, excuse me, thorough paranormal investigation if needed, but Ghost Be Gone strives to go one step further than just ghost hunting. They specialize in getting rid of that extra unwanted guest in your home. Ghost Be Gone has helped many Las Vegas families over the years get their lives and their homes back. Trouble of a paranormal nature can be quite disturbing, and unless you have gone through it yourself, you can... You can't quite know what it's like. Therefore, all inquiries are confidential and they don't charge for their services, but donations are welcome to cover out pocket expenses. And there's a number I can also provide everybody within an email. You can access their website at www.ghost-b-gone.biz. And please welcome Reverend Sean Whittington, my wonderful friend, and um, happy birthday. <laughs> hey, you. Hello. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You okay. cut, cut out there for a second. Hopefully, okay. hopefully that's not on my end. I've been having some computer issues. And you know as well as I do the type of topics that you and I will discuss tonight. There's uh, things out there that would rather we didn't talk about them. So if, you know, the computer does something funky and and crashes or something like that, uh, I've already given you my cell number, and it's right here fully charged with my earbuds right next to me if we need to go to that. But okay. um, that's probably what that is about because I've had some work done on the computer prior to us getting together tonight to hopefully not have any issues. But it always seems to happen when um, I do these types of interviews. So well, you know. And you know what? Listening to you beautifully – recite the bio i haven't read the bio on my website in a while i hardly ever go to the website but i have to change something in that because you said the part about the you know we want to help the people get that unwanted guest out of the home mm -hmm. and you know what they're really not a guest <laughs> that's very true isn't it <laughs> so well, that's a typo for you to yeah, correct. Change that. <laughs> they're really not much of a guest no they're, they're the uninvited i yeah. would call them the yeah. uninvited guests <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't call them a guest but yeah yeah you can fix that Okay. Nonetheless, it's a fantastic bio, and I'm very impressed. And, of course, you all do wonderful work. And it's wonderful to have you on board tonight. And yeah. happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. This is – you asked me earlier before the show started, did I get anything good for my birthday? This was it. You are my my birthday present tonight. So thank you for inviting me. I always – of being on your show. I know I'm going to be on one of your other shows, I, I believe, after the first of the year. Yeah. And I have you coming back, too, on mine. Yes. So, yeah. We're we'll make a good team. Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, indeed. And it's like I said, you're you're one of my wonderful spiritual brothers. I just love you. You know that. So I love you. you know I do. I know you're you good you do the good work out there and, and I know for, for a lot of people out there who are not familiar with you, um, why don't you give everybody a rundown and so far as I know how you got involved in this. What what pushed you on this path? I know you're obviously the minister is there, but what about the path of doing this type of supernatural work? Well, it's not a short story. I don't know if you want me to uh give you the abridged version or just jump right in with the story i was um, well we can do just maybe a short version because we have so much I'll to give cover you the best abridged i can it okay. i was created to do this before i was born uh i got the uh, talk about it from my mother when i was about 10 and uh she let me know uh, my father's history of coming from a long line of uh, warriors for christ and her family history of coming from a long line of devout catholics and very spiritual people and that i had some gifts and i was her miracle baby and i can go into what that was all about at a later date but she said i would do something great for god one day didn't specify what she knew. I, I saw spirits at that time and told me I was going to see a lot of ghosts in my life, not to be afraid of them. And if I saw one, it's just a person that doesn't have a body anymore. And they're obviously reaching out to me for some reason. And it's best if I ask them, how can I help you? What do you want? So it went on from there. I did many, many, many years of uh, just being a ghostbuster, for lack of a better term. And it wasn't until I met my wife over 15 years ago, we fell in love, got married. She's a, a sensitive, near-death survivor, uh, experienced survivor, twice over, 
mm-hmm. came back with a severe extreme sensitivity to spirit. She's I refer to her as my human dowsing rods and, and we hit it off and started ghostbegone.biz some 15 plus years ago. And it wasn't until we had a very uh, ugly case where the extreme malevolent creature that was harassing this young couple followed us home after a, a night we were there investigating and took up residence in our home for um, about two months, turned our lives upside down. Sharon, as a result of that, came down. She was the healthiest person I knew. No history of cancer in her family, didn't drink, didn't smoke, and the extreme demonic attack on us left her with two very rare forms of cancer, a very rare form of tongue cancer, which spread to her thyroid, and that became medullary thyroid, the rarer of the two thyroids. That spread into lymph nodes all through her neck. And so five years later of of fighting that battle, uh, she's still here with us, God bless. Mm -hmm. And uh, I crawled on my hands and knees many a night at at church praying for God to... um, spare her life that you know she wasn't done and obviously she's not done but i just want people to know that these things are very real once they get their talons so to speak into you and leave their mark they can be that deadly and not everybody not everybody is like my wife and not everybody would survive that type of attack and of course i've had them myself too but it was that Going through that, I didn't know what to do other than to reach out into the paranormal community for help, and ultimately I was introduced to my mentor, Deacon Katie McDonald, exorcist retired now, and Dr. Reverend Bill Jordan, who together they founded Gope Christian University and the American Association of Exorcists. They took me under their wing, and uh, they helped me fight that thing out of the house, Katie saw something in me that I didn't see in me and knew that it was my path and calling to continue on the spiritual warfare um, journey, and um, I went on to become ordained. And then now all of a sudden, that seems to be the only cases that come my way now. So um, that is the abridged version, and we're still fighting the battle. Sharon is last full body CT and MRI show no metastasis of the um, disease anywhere, but that didn't come at a, without a, a price to pay. She went through 35 straight treatments of radiation right into her mouth and throat yes. and uh, eight weeks of chemo, which almost killed her. But uh, we're still fighting the battle, and mm-hmm. she's still here, and I'm still here. And, and uh, I'm glad. Thank you. I'm glad I you're am. still here because we need you. There's no doubt about it. And it is spiritual warfare. Any way you look at it, there's no doubt. It seems to be escalating. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just want to thank you so much for all the beautiful work that you do. I know that you're out there and you roll up your sleeves and you help so many people. Now, um, when you finally got rid of this, uh, would you call it a demonic force or just Absolutely. an entity? Okay, so what made it demonic? How do you define demonic versus a regular entity? Well, it was, we were first called into the case because the young lady was saying that she was actually being physically raped in her bed at night while her husband laid there watching and was paralyzed and he couldn't do anything about it. Mm. And uh, then the couple of times he was able to get to her, he would suffer severe beatings from something that he couldn't see. And then it escalated to uh, severe attacks while she would be in the shower and things of that nature. So uh, spirits don't do that. Mm -hmm, Right. You can have very mischievous, malevolent spirits and entities, if you will, in homes. But those types of attacks, that's that's evil. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's evil in nature. And and I just at the time when we went there, like I said, I was just a ghostbuster. I didn't know any better. And um, this is another thing that I want people to remember what I'm about to say. Don't play with the Ouija board. Don't play with satanic games. Mm-hmm. We used a Ouija board that night, of all things. I didn't mm-hmm. know any better. And um, I believe it attached itself to us through the board and followed us home mm-hmm. uh, that night. And that was before but, you were ordained, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. So it makes a big difference because then you're, you know, you have now you're fortified with divine energies, you know, the Holy Spirit and God. Um, I would say that 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 reinforces your shields beyond magnitude. Yes. Yeah, without a doubt. But I was going to also ask, how did you get rid of it? What did you do? Was it was it some sort of a prayer or? 
Well, I started uh, just doing what she told me to do. She taught me how to properly bless uh, my property and my home Mm -hmm. and continue to do that. Um, We didn't use, uh, at the time, all I knew about was uh, sage. And uh, she got me off of the sage. She got me into all the blessed incenses like uh, frankincense and myrrh Mm -hmm. and Ethiopian, uh, Three Kings, Spike Nard. Monastery mm-hmm. incense, so, but it all had to be blessed, mm-hmm. and I just had to smoke the house out, then seal the house with um, holy water, holy oil, uh, blessed salts. I had to uh, bless chalk, regular chalk that, you, chalk that you write on the chalkboard with. I had chalk blessed mm-hmm. so that I could write scripture on the walls and um, draw crosses on the ceilings and the walls, and I had to bury a lot of blessed medallions out in the property in the in the surrounding areas around the home and mm-hmm. lay a lot of salt and holy water down in, in the surrounding property and, and things of that nature. So she taught me how to do that and start building up a hedge of protection around the house. And then it was just, it was easy for me because I was already a baptized Catholic. Mm-hmm. So I just had to start working on my humility and my love uh, towards my fellow man and going back to confession and church and receiving communion and a lot of praying and just draw your line in the sand and fight back. Uh, eventually you. these things will move on when they realize there's got to be an easier target just mm-hmm. next door perhaps rather than uh, go up against this person that now knows how to fight us off. Right, so your that boundaries. doesn't always work. Yeah, it doesn't always work. But mm-hmm. in my case, it did work, and we we were able to get it out of here. And uh, then I had to take some time off, actually, from because I had to help Sharon fight through her battle, mm-hmm. her illness. And uh, then, but then you know, they were waiting because as soon as I jumped right back in to uh, working these types of cases again, I had a severe attack at like the first case back that I worked. And that was, um, that scared me so bad that I actually quit the field for a while, probably took a year off and I was done with it. I just, you know, was every, anything, everything I could do just to continue to go to church and pray and go to confession and communion and, and just pray and, and work on all the things that I was taught to try and keep these things away. I didn't want to go out there and, and fight him any longer, but, um, that wasn't, um, that led to me having a couple of divine, uh, interventions that happened to me on a couple of cases and, uh, some visions that I saw that let me know that, uh, they weren't, you know, I still needed to be on that path and continue to fight and that I always had somebody out there that would have my back and to not be uh, afraid any longer. But my attack was very violent also. And and, uh, mm-hmm. and so I just want people to know these things are very real. Oh, absolutely they are. And I know between you and I, we've discussed before how the covert technology that I'm familiar with, with electronic warfare and electronic possession, can almost mimic a real-time possession of a demonic entity. So yeah. I think it's interesting to to, um, to utilize those um, insofar as just tools in the toolbox. And that's why when you were talking about that woman who was attacked at night, do you know what kind of people they were insofar as, I know you probably can't disclose a whole lot, but uh, were, the, were they local in the area? I mean, was there anything connected that you think might have been technological? Or do you think that was, was a 100% um, demonic uh, a genuine ge- demonic well, force. Here's the strange thing. Oh, where'd you go? You going in and out? Yeah. Are you there? You hear me? Yeah, you were going in and out. Go ahead, Reverend. Tom. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. Okay. I, my screen just went all wacky. Um, here's the thing. I probably should probably reach out to you a little bit more because I've suspected on some cases, perhaps it's some of this covert electronical stuff that you have spoken about and you're the expert. You know, there's been times where I've almost reached out to you and I know you're so busy. And you know, next, you know you I'm know, there for you, though. Always I know me. you are. Seriously. And, there, and then sometimes I'm on, next thing I know, I'm on to... Um, another case and I've moved on and things seem to be okay where they were at, where I was at. So I guess maybe that's why I haven't reached out to you, but I suspect I run into that more than I realize I am. And so to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. I know she had a native American background. They were practically newlyweds. He too was native American, but 
make a long story short, that led into like nine straight demonic cases in a row if they were truly demonic. Wow. And the, the thing that put them all together was everybody knew each other either professionally or personally, and they all knew me. And it was like I was being led down this uh, course through all of these cases that were – connected to one another, very similar activity at every single location, and every client had visions of what they thought their demon was. And they were always, they were, you know, the visions were different in all the cases, but the things that were happening to these people were, were very alike. And I wasn't able to bring closure to some of them. Some of the people had to move. Um, I'm sad to say that I've come full circle and it's been years now, but the original young lady um, who uh, Sharon and I were trying to help and that entity latched itself on us, she is much younger than us. She has now uh, dying of lung cancer. Wow. So, um, you know what? Uh, it, it's sad. Mm -hmm. it, you know, sometimes I'm the first one to say it's it's bigger than me. I don't really have any any powers um i'm on my knees at these cases just praying and begging for god to send down you know warrior angels or saints or whoever um he can spare to come down and walk with me on these properties and help me mm -hmm. fight right but it's 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 so much bigger than me that some i have to it's hard but i have to realize i can't help everybody right and, uh, and it's so, also a path too. you were talking about the Ouija board and, you know, you know, I have a background in the craft, but I'm also have a background in a lot of other things. People don't seem to realize that. And, and I can tell you, you have to be very careful and clear in so far as what you're bringing into your own reality and, and tampering with things that you don't understand or summoning things you can't banish or vanquish is a big deal. And, and that's another thing right there. And, and you, one thing I want to also say is you talk about the warrior angels, but I know, I know not only are you divinely protected, but you're like that. And that's what you are as a multidimensional being. So you're a warrior angel, Sean. Thank time. you. You, you are, and I know you are. Um, and I like that aspect of your humbleness. I, I think that there's um, always room for us to be humble, you know, and allow for more divine energies to come in. But I will say one thing, whatever it is, regardless of people's spiritual paths or belief systems, there's there's evil and there's, there's a lot of darkness running rampant right now. So um, we're all out there uh, fighting the good fight. We're trying to anyway. But yeah, that's that's something to look at with them. And I do see that too with the illnesses. It's... Uh, it's really weird. It's almost like they want to take over the host and just destroy the entire vessel. Yeah. It, what we're seeing now is uh, it's either that. They either destroy the vessel because then they've got the soul captured anyway. Mm -hmm. What they do with that soul, who knows? Uh, I know, you know, you, you talk to some people that are just so evil in nature. And then after they get done telling you, you know, I don't like people. And if somebody is going to do it to me. I'm going to try and do it to them before they do it to me. And, you know, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with my alcohol or drug abuse. And it's okay that I frequent the brothels and, and gamble and whatever. And when it's all said and done and I'm on my deathbed, I'll just, you know, I'll beg forgiveness to God and everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't realize that <laughs> He's already given you free will, and you've chosen that life and that path. And when you die, he's not going to be there for you. Your friends, you're going to have friends <laughs> that are waiting for you on the other side that have you know, been part of all of this big game that you've played. And then that's when you, that's when you pay. Mm -hmm. uh, when you pay up. That's when the, the man comes to, to, to collect on the tab. And... You know, you hear people all the time say things like, you know, I hate my life. Don't say that. And you hear people say, you know, I'd rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. Don't say that. Um, I've talked, I've seen hell and I know other people that have seen hell. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't say that. It's not, um, it's not where you want to end up mm -hmm. and it's forever. And yeah, forever is not even, you know, I don't even like to use the word forever because forever is it's just so much more than forever. It's just, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You remember the movie Prophecy? I don't know if you ever saw it. Um, tell me who the actors. Well, were. Christopher Walken was in it. It was the original Prophecy film. Uh, <laughs> but it reminds me of that in a sense that when he was describing what it's like to be disconnected from God, um, it's so empty. There's nothing there. You know, it's just. Um, I can't really explain it word for word, but it, it was interesting because that concept. I don't think people understand how 
how empty your life becomes when you, you don't have some divine force there. I'm not kidding. And I agree with you on the hells. I've been through technological hells. Um, but I can tell you, no, no, you, nobody wants to be part of that dark world, that evil world. I, I mean, I don't care where you come from or what you believe in. It's bad. So, um, yeah. And it's too bad that they don't do the correction on the course before they die, right? Or before their deathbed. And I see that a lot, Reverend Sean. You know, a lot of people are out there thinking, oh, I'll just, okay, right before I die, I'll just ask for forgiveness. And, and of course, a lot of priests will do that. They'll absolve them, right? Well, they try. It's their job. You want to try to save souls, mm -hmm. but um, it's 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 beyond that. It's much bigger than that. And you, uh, if you, there's no coming back from committing certain types of sins and um, living your life the wrong way. You you'll go unnoticed. You'll you'll live a life that surrounds yourself in so much darkness. When your time comes, God can't see you because mm -hmm. you're just surrounded by darkness. So it's not that He doesn't want to save you. He doesn't see you, mm -hmm. and uh, like your the the other ones are they're just there waiting for you because you've already uh, you've made the choice that that's uh, that's that, the path. Yeah, and you know when you're describing this, it reminds me of vibration because when you can't be seen through your light, your light your your high vibratory rate of consciousness, your your light body, what I call the light body, but the vibration of what you are, um, the divinely protected vibration versus just being coarse and um, disconnected. I see it as an energy form. That's why I, when you were talking about that, it's very interesting. And that's a good analogy. That's a good way to look at things is, is how bright do you really shine in consciousness and your frequency. And that's all about divine divine will and divine paths, I would say. Yes. Yeah, It's and the vibration is, that's a big thing because these things are very low, mm -hmm. uh, very low vibrational. And, yeah. and they're even working on uh, now trying to come up with um, – figure out some type of high frequencies that disrupt uh, malevolent and demonic entities at locations, along with everything else. I mean, you, you want prayer warriors in there praying and maybe also uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, have a priest that's uh, performing mass, a recording of that playing, but they're they're working now on possibly having uh, machinery that you can bring into extremely demonically infested um, locations and play these uh, machines at high frequencies and high vibrational levels. And they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out exactly where, where they're at that will work, that will disrupt all of that uh, low energy to make it just uh, uninhabitable. Right. So to speak, for these these entities to remain in that location on top of everything else they're being bombarded with, the prayer and stuff, because now we're trying to find other ways that we can fight it, whether the people are on board or not. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, I I get reached out to by people, but they're not willing. They either haven't hit rock bottom yet mm -hmm. or I, I don't know what's going on there, but they I know they're under some demonic influence. So that's there also, but they don't want to. They reach out for help, but they don't want to do what I'm asking them to do to help me help them. Mm -hmm. And so it hurts. But a lot of people I have to just cut loose because right. I can't help them if, if they're not going if they're not going to do what I ask them to do. Mm -hmm. And some of the things I ask are, are not that bad at all. It's not uh, I'm not, you know, but it's uh, I, I just think it's a mixture of being a little under some demonic influence and not having hit rock bottom yet because mm -hmm. the ones that have, they're willing to do anything. Right. No, I totally agree with you. And you know what's interesting? You're talking about the frequencies. Now, that would be really good because that can that can blow out not only the entities themselves, but I would assume possibly electronic technological warfare that they're already deploying. And the problem with the technological warfare is that if they're using those as well, and you know, we have all, all the Wi-Fi and everything else associated, that will just amplify all these entities. That's just going to give them something else to attach onto. So you've got all this technology, you've got, you've got a double whammy there. So using technology like frequencies and so far as radionics or even something similar, I would say would be a very good idea. Um, there's a photon sound beam. I know that sound that works really well. I know radionics works very well. Well, so those are things to look at. And I think that once you keep doing this work, which I, I just see it more and more that you're probably going to incorporate a lot more technological stuff just to blow out some of the technology that they might be getting interfaced with or harassed with just because that's going to add on to the demonic entity possession. And I believe this is by design, by the way. 
I believe that a lot of the warfare programs that they're doing right now, not only are they spiritual warfare, but they're technological warfare covertly. And that also affects people on the path and, and re-diverts the course of where they're going spiritually. What do you think, what do you, what is your gut feeling tell you the logic behind uh, the people that are doing that, perhaps? I think they're evil as all hell, excusing my French, you know, I mean, you know where I've been, Sean, Reverend Sean, yeah. I, I mean, I have been through places that I don't wish on anybody. I've written about it, I've exposed it, I testified against it. It's evil, and it's designed to do one thing, disconnect you from source, whatever that divine force is, and your beautiful soul and spirit. It is an evil, mind control, covert warfare program, and they use it, and they're using technological, um, in my opinion, transmissions and frequencies, ultra-low frequency, microwave towers, Gwen towers, um, satellite-driven technology, everything they can think of, and now they've got this, um, you know, this other, these other uh, technologies coming forward with artificial intelligence, so it's going to be nasty, and, and, you know, that's just from my own personal experience. It's never done any good for anybody here. If it's diverting your course to the electronic god, how can that, people are going to choose the electronic god versus the real god, real source, right? Yeah. So. Well, you know, it's everywhere. So it's scary to even walk outside. There was yeah. a time when, like 15 years ago when I moved into this house, there were some power lines around here and there. But now there's, like you said, those big towers mm -hmm. with the huge boxy looking um, solar dishes. And it's not even a dish anymore because there's like a big box attached to the back of the dish mm -hmm. with the lightning bolts on it. And they're facing in different directions with the huge... Uh, tower antennas on top and they're just like right outside my neighborhood and yeah. they weren't there before um it's just scary it's like sharon right now is suffering from severe headaches that no one can figure out what's causing them and i know that she has been already sensitive but it has been targeted and opened up so much from her attack mm -hmm. that you know when doctors can't find out what's wrong and they've done everything, the CTs and the MRIs and x-rays, and uh, and they've given her, you know, every medic. I mean, we've got a drawer full of medications. She doesn't like to take those things anyway, but a drawer full of those, and none of those ever helped. I think it's all related. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. I was going to ask you if you guys had smart meters, because I'm under the impression that I know from just some research that I've done, some people do get very bad headaches associated with smart meters. Yeah. No, was that the one where they come in the house and they put their own meter in there? Yeah, they pretty much have it under remote control. It's usually no. on the outside of the house, if I'm not mistaken. But I know that they, um, I think they have them in your location. I know they, that this was a testing ground here in Colorado for the smart um, smart meters too. So, yeah. They're here. I'll have to go out and look on my house. I know they, they reached out to us and wanted to come in the home and put a new thermostat that they could monitor and control from somewhere. And mm -hmm. we said no. But they may have put something on the outside of the house, and I, I didn't even think to go check, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's gone from analog to digital. So what I've noticed the biggest thing is, uh, you know, when, once you get digitized and everything becomes digital, it just becomes a remote access. Everything can be remotely hacked, remotely controlled. And even from people I know, like I live far away from from towns, you know, I live up away from people, but I can tell you the people I know that live in the cities, they have, um, she has migraine headaches from their smart meters. And also, um, the fact that they can turn things on and off, or they can regulate what you're using or what you're utilizing, or they can track what you're doing, uh, when you're using the washer and dryer, when you're using, you know, it's just, just the strangeness of it. And it's really yeah. about a sick control. It really is. And it's not like some person's behind a screen there watching you. It's the computer system. It's the AI, it's the manufactured, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it artificial program that's running to really regulate. But I, I don't like where we're heading as a society. And I think that you can pretty much tell just by the way people are addicted to their iPhones and they're addicted to the misuse of technology almost. It's like the computers, yes, they're research oriented in a sense that we can, we can study when we research on the internet, but still people are getting swept away. And you're seeing that more and more where they're getting diverted and they're also losing their sensitivity to energy. They're becoming numb. Yeah. It's, it's, it's affected everybody. I don't, you know, we just had that tragedy here in Vegas, the mass shooting. And it's sad because I'm even a victim of it. When you say, well, no, you, the, the best revenge and the best way you get back at terrorists, and I know they hate people to use that term, but is to just go ahead and continue to live your life. And I'm the first one to tell you it's hard to do because I have even – now don't want to go outside. Mm -hmm. It's frightened me. Mm -hmm. You know, all I do is go to work. I come home and I, I work cases. 
I'm so overwhelmed with cases. I have to refer a lot out, do way more counseling than I can physically getting there. I can maybe juggle physically a couple of cases at a time, but that's really tough. But other than that, I just don't want to go out outside. It's just, um, I can feel it outside. I can feel the oppressiveness and, and, uh, the evil everywhere. And I'm always reminded about, and God forgive me for forgetting his name, um, uh, an exorcist that, um, I was, uh, read something about, he, he was in an exorcism and he got, he was in conversation with the demon and he asked the demon what his mission was or who the demon was, something along that line. And the demon answered him, no, he asked the demon, why can't I see you or why can't we see you? Mm -hmm. And his response was, if you could see us, we are so many that we would block out the sun. Oh, wow. And I believe that. And yeah. I think that's – and the war is – we've always been in the war. People say, well, the war hasn't started yet, and when the war finally comes, we know who wins the war. And yeah, we do know who wins the war, but we were always in the war. We're still in the war. Battles are always being fought. But there's always been this hedge of protection around us that I think, as time has gone on, has uh, broken down. Mm -hmm. And so much of that evil has just seeped its way into humanity and mankind like a cancer that that's what we're seeing all over the world right now. Just this um, just this evil taking over. And mm -hmm. uh, it, I agree. it's affected even me. And I used to not be like that. I was because I, I don't fear death. Mm -hmm. If I walk down the street and somebody puts a gun to my head and blows my brains out because he just wanted to. Uh, oh, well, I'm in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a blink of an eye, but right. it has affected me because now I think about that and I don't want, I don't even want to walk my dogs around the block. Yeah, I know. And you live in the heart of what I would say, well, you know, you're right there in Vegas and I have to give you a lot of credit for that because, you know, <laughs> it, it's intense over there. I'm sure the energies yeah. are bizarro and you have a lot of, uh, I don't know, it just, it just seems like a lot of people are on the, on the bad path, maybe to some yeah. degree. So maybe that's why you're there, you know, to try to assist people to some degree on that one. But yeah, I know you're divinely protected, but I, I would say the same thing. You know, I'm very strong too and very fierce like a Valkyrie, but I'm also very um, situation awareness oriented and I'm not, um, I just, it's not the same world it was when we were little, you know, it's not the same world we grew up in and it's changed and we always had an innocence. I, I know you probably did too. I always thought everybody was good. I never, never, ever really realized that people were this evil in this world. And, you know, what's interesting when you're talking about that darkness I was just thinking about that earlier, um, how to me the world seems like there's this big, it's almost like this planet's been swallowed by a big, um, I, don't wanna, I don't know how to describe it other than like a, a, a ship of some kind. I don't want to say a spaceship, but it's like this planet's been swallowed or encapsulated by something that's black. And I mean, it's funny how you said that because you kind of communicated some of that what I was picking up on. Where's the sunlight? Where, where is the light um, of divine force? And I know it's here within us, but it is getting uh, not dimmed, but I would say they're trying to run interference, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very sad. And that's why I say your work is so needed. You don't know how much it's needed, honestly. So I'm very grateful well, I, to you. I don't try to convert anybody. You, you know me. We, we talked a little bit about mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago what we may discuss tonight. I, I'm not the kind of guy that gets his preach on. Um, and I have to tell you, most of uh, I've had a lot of people reach out to me from other religions. Mm -hmm. And the first words out of their mouth, because first I ask, you know, what uh, religious, if any, uh, type of, you know, where you know where are you coming from? What are your what's your belief system? What do you have in place where you know where that is going? And they'll tell me. And the first thing I advise is you need to go to your church, talk to your priest, your rabbi, your minister, uh, what have you, and um, you know talk to him first. Mm -hmm. um, and usually they all say I did that, and I couldn't find any help there. Wow. And so I know they're not coming to me to become Catholic or they want to speak to my wife about becoming Lutheran. I know that's not the case, but they've come to me for some reason. And, and what I get from them is all I know is what's latched on to me is the darkest, most evil thing that has ever I've ever encountered in my life personally. And I just want it gone. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and I feel in my heart and the vibe that I get from you is that you can help me. And if you can't, you'll at least going to try. Oh, absolutely. And maybe help me find help. So you'd be surprised. I mean, and some of the um, uh, gentlemen that have come to me are from all different uh, religions uh, that would really surprise me. So I've I've had some say I'm this religion, or and I would kind of lean back and go, Wow, I, I wouldn't expect you of all people to to come to someone like me. But you know, God loves you, I love you, and I'll do my best to try to help you. So um, mm-hmm. I've learned that unless the person is Catholic, I can't tell them to. Go get if they're not baptized. I can tell them to go to a Christian church and get dipped in the holy waters and start going to a prayer group and masses and all that. And if they're Catholic, I can advise them to go back to confession and communion and church and all that. But a lot of these people that reach out to me that really are strongly rooted in another religious belief, mm-hmm. I know it's wrong for me to try to get them off of that. So we come to a common ground that. Okay, right now you've got something, the most evil, darkest thing that has latched onto you that you has ever happened to you in your life. So are we in agreement that this is pure evil and it's dragging you down and you this is not where you want to go? Yes. Are we in agreement then that there has to be an opposite of that, a great father? Like, you know, for lack of a better term, what my Indian friends refer to as the great father, whoever that is for you. And it can be, it doesn't have to be the God that I think it is, but it could be the great father. So you got to, <laughs> you know, let's just keep it simple here. You got to get find a way to get good with the great father again. So how are we going to do that? And you'd be surprised the different things that me and people from other uh, religious backgrounds have come up with and how they're going to do that. But just keep it simple. I mean, it, it, it is so simple. Mm-hmm. Try to try to cut back on the drinking. Try to cut back on uh, drug use. Keep your mind clear, you know, so that y- y- you can fight better and you know what's going on. Larry. Try, try yeah. to cut back on watching the porno. Try to cut back on, on things that you just know are not good. Try, I know it's hard because people are mean. And we're all got just normal human emotions attached to us. So it's hard, but even when try to turn the other cheek, I know it's hard. It's hard for me when people are mean to you, love them this, that much more, you know, try to turn the other cheek, be humble, work on your, your humility, work on just trying to be every day. Everybody pretty much is in agreement that everyone has something attached to them that is out to protect them, whether it's a guardian angel or something else. Go online, type in prayers to guardian angels. You're going to see a hundred of them or more. Read through a few of them. You're going to, they're all beautiful, but one's going to jump out at you and speak to you. Take that prayer, download it, print it out, thumbtack it to your wall next to your bed or tape it to your fridge or thumbtack it right to the side of your front door. Say a prayer to your guardian angel every morning when you wake up, thanking him for being there for you, because I guarantee you, and I've seen mine twice, and if it wasn't for my guardian angel, I wouldn't be, you and I would not be having this conversation right now. Mm. Thank them, ask them to continue to intervene in your life and help you through your day. And then pray to your great father before you go to bed at night to watch, thank him for your life. No matter how miserable you think your life is, it can be worse. No matter how much you think you hate your life, it could be worse. You know, thank him for your life. Thank him for protecting you. And thank him for watching over you and protecting you while you sleep. And just whatever else you want to say. Don't even worry about it having to be a particular prayer. I'm big on on particular prayers personally. But uh, act as though he's sitting in a big chair across the room from you and you're looking right at him. And envision him looking any way you want if it's Santa Claus. But pray to him and thank him for your life and thank him for protecting you and ask him to stay in your life and intervene on your behalf and every evil you come up against and keep you on the right path and 
aimed in the right direction and just every day try to be a per- better person than you were the day before and so on and so on and so on. And could you imagine, I mean, this is silly for me to even say, but could you imagine if, if everybody did that? <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Well, you know, whether you call it, yeah, it, it's, that's what we're supposed to be doing in my opinion. I, I mean, and I, I have this saying, it's all rivers lead to the same ocean. In other words, every religion, unless you're a real evil person, I mean, doing malicious things with the name of your God, I believe that all river, rivers, and religious paths lead to the spirit, lead to source, lead to our Holy Father, whatever you want to call it. That's just my, my perception of the way I see things. But I can't believe that there is just one group of people in one religion that is only, you know, that can only ascend. I don't believe that. I believe that people who are good in their hearts, pure in their souls, and are connected to a, a divine force and believe in that and have faith in that can can absolutely keep ascending. So when you talk about this, and I like that because you're you're working on a spiritual plane, you're you're taking it and you're transcending the religious to the spiritual, which I think is a big deal. Um, and also I, I do, I love prayers too. And you know, you'd be surprised to um to know how many prayers that I, I work with. You know, I work with Catholic prayers, um, Hindu, Hindu affirmations and mantras. I work with all kinds of stuff. And I know that um you take the best of all worlds. That's what I do anyway. And I transcend a lot of things. So I think it's I think that's very significant, and I would love to see the world um, regenerated on that level. But what do you think it's going to take for people to to, um, to do that? You know, do they have to put their iPhones down? Do they have to disconnect from their computers? What is it? I, I don't know. I just, uh, I just, I just don't know. It's like I had a great conversation with um, a psychic medium that I really respect and think that her gift is really a God-given talent that she has. And she doesn't think any of us are originally from here, that we're all aliens, that this is a big experiment. And 2,000 years from now, our descendants will be on another planet talking about how we all came from Earth. Mm -hmm. So um, I sort of kind of am leaning towards that. I think this whole thing is going to run its course, but there's another, another life you're going to live in the spiritual realm after you leave this plane and you want to uh, you want to be on the on the right side of that mm-hmm. uh, for sure so um I yeah agree. you know i'm not perfect i you know i get well, you're an I, angel you've got pretty good sized wings i know you do <laughs> <laughs> but i do all the stuff you know i get mad at my coworkers and you know i sometimes get mad at my boss and that's uh, all right. I mean, you know, you don't just, punish it, yourself. It is what it is. You know, that's just <laughs> so people just, 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 you know, we're all human. Um, you know, I love it when I hear people say we're, we're a lot more alike than we are different. And if you put all the different races um, together and, and we are, but it is what it is. At the same time, we're so much more alike than we think. There are differences, and that's why it's so beautiful, and the human race is so beautiful, because that's how we were created. But, gosh, I'm telling you, I, I just know that I can't really, unless somebody's really seen some of the things, that's what got me off of drinking. And, uh, you know, when I was very young, I went through the drug abuse years, but I, right up to the time when Sharon and I first met, I wasn't a raging alcoholic, but I could throw them back with the best of them. And there'd be a couple of nights a week on my days off where, you know, I was, I couldn't, when it came time to go back to work on money, I couldn't remember what I did on the weekend. Mm. I knew how to party, but I got to seeing so many crazy things and experiencing so much i i just wanted to know am i is it am i really experiencing this or am i just a drunk uh am i losing my mind am i going crazy or is this really happening plus i want to represent my god and my beliefs and what i'm trying to do for a client in a good way uh, when my wife and i knock on somebody's door and they open it up i can tell the look on their face that they just they're so grateful that we're they're there they can see that, you know, we're just not two big black vans with 10 investigators piling out of each van, throwing the electronic gauntlet down over their home and telling them they got to leave for a week because we're going to move in and find out what's going on here and, you know, make a big thing about it. And uh, uh, it's just, it's not, we, we're we not like that. And I, and I think that makes a big difference too. And, mm, genuine, and, yeah. Um, 
So, uh, no doubt. yeah. Well, I like the idea that you consecrate the area. I think that you hit on a, a few wonderful topics. And so far as when we first started out there about um, how you how you were able to kind of shield yourself and also purify your home. And I think that when people start taking responsibility for their own environment and so far as their own garden, their spiritual garden in their own homes or outside their homes, I think that's going to make a big difference. So I would say setting the intent and, and creating that sacred space and keeping it sacred is a big deal to not attract these forces, right? Yes. Yeah, my neighbors, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they've they seen me out there in the yard doing some crazy things, you know, digging up a big hole in the corner of, you know, my, my yards and, you know, putting Well, the- you know, you and I do <laughs> very similar things, you know. <laughs> they see me blessing my water system and then I'm actually spraying my house. That makes my, my whole water system holy water. So now I'm spraying down the roof and Good. the trees and everywhere. And, and I just, you know, it's... You get the neighbor's house by accident? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I've had, well, you know, the neighbors at the left and right me, we had a gentleman die in the house on Mm -hmm. one side of us from suspicious um, issues. And so the people that moved in there next were having some issues. So, yeah, if the guy is out there and he sees me doing it to my roof, he does ask me to... You know, get a little bit over there if I can. And the, the house to the other side of us had burnt down once. Mm. And um, after they had rebuilt it back up, um, the gentleman asked me to do the same thing to his home. But they've seen me out there doing some uh, some odd things. Had a very odd situation. And my home is always under attack. That's why I always have to keep um, blessing it and smoking it out and sealing the uh, property around and stuff. And I... The wife was working a concert. This was back when she was a a part-time usher at the MGM Grand Garden doing concerts on the weekend. And I was saying goodbye to two friends who were flying back to England about 20 minutes down the road. So I came back home, and I pulled into my driveway. And as soon as I get out of my car and shut my door, I get like six flashlights in my face and being told to get down on my face Hmm. by SWAT team. Oh, wow. So I I don't know what's going on. The guy says, "Well, we got a 911 call from your home, and since we've been here, we om- we were about to break in your house. We didn't want to because we knew we would have to shoot your dogs. But it sounds like the dogs are killing something in there. We suspect one of your family members. I said it can't be a family member. It's just my wife and I, and she's." at work right now and i've been gone well then maybe a burglar broke in and your dogs are killing him but we got to get in there so i get inside i bring my dogs to the master bedroom and i lock them in there and i open up the drapes and i turn the bedroom light on so the cops can look through the window and see my dogs and see that there's nothing in there going on in the master bedroom then i let them come in the home and they search all through the home and in the backyard and everything could find no trace of a break-in but sure enough, a 911 call came from the house. But now my neighbors <laughs> have seen all that go on. So they know that, you know, they think my wife and I are the crazy ghost people in the neighborhood. And, like, the kids don't even come trick-or-treating oh. here. They usually, if they do come by, they, they sit on the sidewalk and they actually send their parents up to really? not get the candy. Yeah, but we're known as, like, they love us, but they're, they, they kind of stay away from the home. They know that... Mm-hmm. Uh, we're the crazy ghost people, and uh, there's things going on here. Yeah, our house is very haunted, mm. um, but it's we get it's people in visitation that um, I've done good things for uh, for them, even though they're on the other side. Mm. They've requested things of me. I've done stuff for them, and um, the evil is gone. But they do come by and let you know they're watching. We get the knocks on the front door. The you door get the door. knocks. Now let me the, ask you something real quick about the knocks. Is it a is it a physical knock like somebody's there? Are you sleeping when you hear that at night, or is it? Sharon and I will be sitting right just inside the front door to the left at the dining room table, maybe eating or maybe reading or maybe doing whatever, and it's a knock. Mm-hmm. She'll get up and look out the curtain expecting to see somebody there and will just glance over at me and I'll just look at her and I can tell by her look there's no one there and wow. I'll say do don't open it. I just tell her, don't. Interesting. You know why? Because I've been talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, right before actually Halloween or Samhain, I actually kept getting like knocks on my door. But it wasn't like I was in between spaces of sleep and awake. But I, I know it was so loud that it woke me up. Hmm. So I did not open that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, don't. 
Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. But we get it all. We get uh, we get the sledgehammers on the roof. Sounds like our AC. That we have the AC units on the roofs here in the Southwest. So it sounds like the AC unit is blowing up, but it it's not. And you know, I get the. Um, what sounds like a feral cat being ripped apart by dogs in my backyard, and I go out there, and there's nothing out there. Um, wow. It ranges from a, a variety of uh, different things, and sometimes it does happen right as I come out of a dream or wake up from a nap or I've been sleeping, and I'll sit for a minute to say, is this really happening? And it doesn't take long to realize, no, this is really happening. Uh, maybe they thought they could sneak on in here while I was asleep, but something woke me up and alerted me to the danger. And and uh, at the same time you don't open the door, you have to be ready to confront it. Mm-hmm. If you think it's gotten past that first layer. Right, exactly. And then hold that thought for a second. We're going to have our break, everybody. You're listening to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue, and my wonderful guest tonight is Reverend Sean Whittington. And we'll be right back. And it is his birthday, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> 